a righteous king, based on 2 Kings chapter 22, verse 1, through chapter 24, verse 17. Years pass. Josiah becomes the king of Judah when he is only eight years old. The high priest Hilkiah helps raise him, teaching the young king to remain true to God. His faith and righteousness are like that of a young David. But God isn't only raising up a righteous king, he is also raising up a reluctant prophet. Thirteen years later, God speaks to a young man named Jeremiah. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and I set you apart to be a prophet to the nations. But I am just a child. No one will listen to me. What do you see? Invaders coming down from the north to destroy Judah. Will anyone believe me? No, they will fear you and try to kill you. But do not be afraid, for I am with you. Young Josiah rules Judah firmly but fairly. One day, he decides... It's been decades since my great-grandfather Hezekiah repaired the temple. The walls are crumbling. I want them repaired immediately. Workers begin at once. As they clear the rubble, the high priest Hilkiah notices... Stop! What's that object behind those stones? When Hilkiah opens the ancient scroll, he immediately realizes... Praise God! It's the long-lost Torah, the book of the law that God gave to Moses. But as he reads the scroll to King Josiah, Hilkiah's joy turns to despair. God's laws are clearly stated, and so is the punishment for anyone who disobeys them. Then Judah is doomed. We have broken God's laws many times. I had no idea. Can we just pretend we didn't find this scroll? No, we cannot ignore God's word. Josiah is so upset that he quickly sends several high-ranking officials to the prophetess Huldah. Is there anything that can be done? This is what God says. Because Judah disobeyed me, Judah will be destroyed. But because Josiah's heart is humble before the Lord, the destruction will not happen while Josiah is king. Hoping to win God's forgiveness for his nation, Josiah reads the scroll of God's laws to the people. He asks them to commit to following God's commands, and he reestablishes the celebration of Passover. Why is this night different from all other nights? For several years, the prophet Jeremiah and the king worked together to destroy idol worship. Never before or since has there been a king like Josiah. He serves the Lord with all his heart, soul, and strength. Then one day, a military commander brings some frightening news. The Assyrian Empire is falling apart. Just like Nahum predicted, Egypt's army is marching north. I think Pharaoh Necho hopes to grab what's left. If Egypt becomes the next superpower, they will want to control Judah as well. I must stop them. Stop Egypt? But it's one of the strongest countries in the world. And God has warned me that Babylon is the country that will one day destroy Jerusalem, not Egypt. Ignoring Jeremiah's advice, King Josiah leads his soldiers out to defend the pass of Megiddo and into the path of the oncoming Egyptian army. In the battle, Pharaoh Necho faces off against King Josiah and kills him. When soldiers bring Josiah's body back in his chariot, Jeremiah is overcome with grief at the death of his godly king. He knows that Josiah's death marks the beginning of the end for Jerusalem. Now Jehoiakim sits on the throne of Judah as a puppet ruler for Egypt. But he does evil and leads his people away from the Lord and disregards Jeremiah's warnings. In the meantime, more bad things happen to Judah. 
Babylon comes to power, just like Jeremiah predicted. The Babylonian king, Nebuchadnezzar, conquers Egypt and forces Judah to surrender. To ensure Jehoiakim's loyalty, Nebuchadnezzar takes many of the princes and Jerusalem's finest young men as hostages. 